So welcome to everyone watching this video. In today's video, we are going to be creating a nice to-do list app in FLTK C++. So if you are excited for this video, smash the thumbs up button. Also subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss out on some awesome stuff like this on a daily basis. So let's just start coding. Currently, I'm going to be opening a folder and going towards our projects folder where we already have these four projects. So if you want to see these projects, you can go ahead and click the link in the description for these projects. Now, our new folder will be FLTK. I would be opening this inside of our favorite Visual Studio Code IDE and we would be creating a new file named a.cpp. So inside of this a.cpp, our whole code would be there. Don't worry, it's not that complex and Again, don't worry, we would not be creating header files or more 10 files, right? Only this single file and our work is done. So the very basic thing for creating a window is first we need to import the very basic library of FLTK. That is fl slash fl dot h. So this is the very basic library for creating FLTK applications. Now. For creating a window in FLTK, you need to import another library that is FL underscore window. Please mind the cases of this. So sometimes what happens, you would do a lowercase w or a lowercase f, then capital F or <laughs> like, you know, these kinds of errors generally happen in C++. So just take care of that. Okay. Now we are going to be creating an int main function inside of which we are going to, well, return zero, right? But in case of our applications, that is FLTK applications, we do not do return zero. We do something else. We do return FL colon colon run. So this is what you would actually type to return zero in terms of FLTK apps. FLTK is not called FLTK actually. It is known as full tick. Okay, so just take care of that. I would be calling this FLTK. Go over to here and type int star x will be equal to a new int and I would pass 10 inside of it. Okay, I have typed this just to explain to you how we are going to create a new window. Here you can see the type of the variable that is int. But currently we are using pointers that is star x. So basically star x is a pointer, okay? And x is basically the memory location where this x has been stored. This is very basic pointers in C++. Will be equal to a new. So what is new? New is uh, used to access constructors present inside of the class. New integer and what is the value of the integer? That is 10. In the very, very same way, we would be creating our window. How we would create a window? FL underscore window, the same way we had passed int. Star window, the same way we had typed star x, will be equal to a new FL underscore window. But in our case, this takes five arguments. Okay, let's just remove this previous line. So this takes five arguments. The first is the coordinates where you want to open the window. So what are those coordinates? So basically your window might open at the center of the screen or at the top of the screen. What we need to do is open our screen at the top left. For this, we would pass 10 comma 10. You can pass 0 comma 0, but it might just glitch out in many systems. So 10 comma 10 is the safest thing. And this is basically the X coordinate. This is the Y coordinate of where you want to place the window. Now, this also requires two more arguments. That is, what would be the width and the height of the window? I would want to keep the width of the window as 500 and height of the window again as 500. Very good. So this is the very basic code to create a window. Now to show the window, we do something like window dash greater than sign show. This is the function that we call to show a window. Some people might be thinking, what is this dash greater than sign? Let me explain. This dash greater than sign is basically how you would do window dot show. This is done in terms of when you are accessing variables, but this is in terms of when you are accessing pointers. Okay, window being a pointer, we are using 
dash greater than sign if window was a variable we would have done dot but we are using pointers let's just remove this and uh, i think so our code is ready so we would be running it go inside of the terminal the shortcut key to open the terminal inside of many ids and like visual studio code is control with the tilde sign that you can see on your keyboard it looks like this now let's just run this so for that fltk minus config okay remember this fltk minus config minus minus compile dot slash a dot cpp now if you have not configured FLTK correctly or you have not installed FLTK onto your system, this might not work well. So I might be making a short video on how to install FLTK onto your system. Let's just press enter and our app has been created. Let's just see. Here you can see we have this A binary that we can run. Binary is basically an exe file you can say it. Dot slash A now you can see our nice looking window ready now the window didn't quite have a title right you can see there is no title so let's just give it a title for giving a title inside of this only like this fl underscore window the same thing we can pass an argument the title of the window that would be to do list something like this okay now let's just run the code again and here you can see our nice to-do list app ready. Very good. The window looks quite big, so let's just make it 300 comma 300. Perfect. After this, what we would do, how will our app look like? Our app will have two buttons, add task, delete task. Okay, so for adding these two buttons, we would include a new library that is fl slash fl. Some people might have already guessed button dot edge <laughs> very easy i think so this is like basic english like very easy fl underscore button star button this time we would name this actually a better name that is add underscore task underscore button will be equal to a new fl underscore button and we would pass few arguments to this the first one is obviously the position of the button inside of the window Inside of the window, I would again like to put it on 10, 10. Its width would be uh, 75 and its height would be 25. Just guessing, okay? And let's just give this a uh, text. So obviously a button has a text, right? So what kind of text we would add to it? Add task. Okay, so this button will have a text add task. We would also like to add another button that is, for example, delete task button delete task button will be equal to a new fl button this time the coordinates would change obviously the coordinates would be like 10 comma 10 is that coordinate of the first button we would increase the x coordinate so that the button like just moves to the right of it okay i think so it is difficult to visualize like this but basically on a graph paper you just imagine a graph paper in your mind so a graph paper has coordinates right so you are basically putting it on 10 comma 10 the first button the second button we are going to place it at uh the y coordinate would remain same 10 because we want the button to be in the same line and we want to shift it to the other column so let's just add 10 with 75 that is the width plus x that is 85 and 85 with a buffer of 15 i think so 100 is fine this is i'm not doing any calculations or something okay this is uh, basic math of coordinates i know it is very difficult to understand right now but it would be re really easy after some practice now we have this 75 comma 25 the width and height would be the same but I think so the width of delete text itself is very long, right? It has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven characters. So let's just make the width 100. Again, we are going to run our like code. Here you can see our nice looking add task, delete task buttons looking very good. We can also add a different scheme to our window. What is a scheme? Scheme is basically like what kind of theme do you want to apply to the window we would like to apply a gtk plus theme to it 
I I really like GTK Plus. Run this again, and here you can see our buttons are looking rounded and also quite nice. Very good. After this, I would like to add an input box where the person can type their task. Click on Add Task button, and the task would be added. For this, F L underscore uh, input. We need to import this library. F L underscore input. Every time you are using a new widget, you need to import it. So fl underscore input. Actually, let's just paste this fl underscore input dot h, and we are going to do star input will be equal to a new fl underscore input. The very same way we are creating other widgets, it is the same. This time the x coordinate would increase. Ten plus twenty five is thirty five. Plus extra buffer, so fifty. Fifty is fine. Fifty of x, actually ten of x and fifty of y, and uh, basically, basically, I am correctly deciding the position of this. Okay, and we are going to give this a width of. Uh, the input should have a large width, right? So the width this time would be five hundred or four hundred, three hundred, two hundred and eighty. And the height would be twenty five fixed because the text font size is also uh, like near about twenty five, and the label will have a text of, for example, uh, enter task something like this. Very good, enter task. Run this again. Oh, semicolon missing. Never miss semicolons. <laughs> okay, always have a habit. We were continuously compiling this two times, like compiling and then running the code. Let's just combine this into a single command using and and dot slash a. Very good. Press enter, and it has been compiled and run. Wow, this looks fabulous. The text that we had written in front of it has gone missing. Okay, let's just align it a bit better. The x coordinate was ten. Let's just increase the x coordinate to be. Not hundred ten. Increase it to be fifty. That is fine. And reduce the width to be thirty. Very good. Run this again. And uh, enter task. Okay, so task is visible. Enter is not visible. Let's just fix that again. Increase the x to hundred this time. And reduce the width to two two hundred. Fine. Let's just run this again. This is this is very basic. Okay, we are just aligning this. We are just aligning this. This is basically you need to think in your mind, or even better, I would suggest is there is something known as an app builder of fluid that you can run and you can basically build this app without using coordinates or burning your brain. <laughs> okay, now this enter task has been aligned quite well. Let's just increase it to ninety two. That should be perfect. Yeah, perfectly aligned with the button. Actually, ninety two has gone a bit far. Ninety is perfect. Run this again. Yep, perfect. Enter task. I would enter task and click on add task. Where will this task be added? It would be added inside of a list box that we need to create below this. So we're creating a list box or a browser. What we need to do? We need to import another and type hashtag include fl slash fl underscore hold. Underscore browser. So this is a very basic list box. Uh, this is how you can add list boxes inside of your FLTK. FL underscore hold underscore browser star list box. Let's just name it list box. Will be equal to a new FL underscore hold underscore browser, which would take few arguments. Again, five arguments. The first one is uh, the Position of x, the position of x we would give ten. Uh, the position of y we would give it eighty. Uh, because eighty, because yeah, eighty would be perfectly fine. And we are also going to give it a width and a height. Width would be twenty minus three hundred. Three hundred is the width of the window. Ten on the left side, ten on the right side, like spacing. So ten plus ten twenty. Three hundred minus twenty is two eighty. So two eighty, and we would also give this a height. Height, because its y location is eighty, so height would near and about would be two hundred itself. 
so let's just compile this again run this and here you can see our nice looking window with a list box and here you can enter task click like type some kind of task click on add task and a task would be added inside of this this also takes one more argument is that what kind of like label do you want to show below it so i would like to show that tasks label below it run this and here you can see a tasks label just below our list box now how will this function we would type something we would click on add task and this task would be added inside of the list box so how we would code this let's just see in c++ for adding functions to the buttons we use something known as callback here we have fl underscore button that we were using whose name is add task button right so add task button the with a dash and an arrow that you know callback so callback is basically a function to pass a function that would be called when the add task button is clicked now the function that would be called is add underscore task perfect add underscore task now this function would be called when this button is clicked to define this function we are going to be typing void add underscore task with these parentheses and this basically takes two arguments the first one is fl underscore widget like what is calling it and the second is void star okay void star that is the data that you want to get inside of your function inside of this what we are going to do whenever the button is clicked we are going to add whatever was inside of the text box to the list box the text box is the input copy the input paste it in here so input value the value of the input we want to get this is the function for that okay how am i able to access the input inside of this function because this is global okay very good we are going to pass this value inside of the list box okay so list box dot add we are going to add input value to it let's just run this so there is an okay so we cannot use dot in pointers run this again how you can see our app is here enter task click on add task and it has added that task there are two issues a person can keep on spamming on this add task so we need to remove the task after the person clicks on add task also people can add invisible tasks that is like this you can see <laughs> an invisible task we need to counter these two things the first thing that we need to counter is that a person does not enter empty tasks or an invisible task for that we need to add an if statement so if input value so if the input value is is not equal to is not equal to empty quotes that is if the person is not adding empty tasks then we are going to add that task also once the task has been added we need to omit the task so input value we are going to set it to just empty quotes so that uh, what once the person has typed inside of the input box we need to just remove the value okay let me show what we have done so for example I, if i click on add task it won't add invisible tasks if i would type something inside of the input box click on add task it would add that task and basically the enter task this would be disappeared right very good so i need to type click on add task and it would be added and no invisible tasks are there to delete a task i would click on this and then click on delete task okay so for example i have selected this using my mouse and once i click on delete task this task should be deleted for coding this part we are going to create a new callback for the delete task button delete task button delete task button and we would be creating a callback for delete task let's just copy the previous function and for now let's just hide the terminal okay 
and we are going to paste it here so delete task button delete task okay once the delete task button is clicked this would be executed if input value actually we need to remove this okay for deleting the task what we need to do we are going to do something very easy this is list box okay list box we are going to get its value so uh, what is this this is to get what the person has selected now we need to remove the thing that the person has selected for deleting what the person has selected we are going to do list box with an arrow like this and we need to remove it right so obviously remove we are we are passing list boxes value to the list box remove function let's just see how our code is working so enter task we are entering the task click on it and delete task and wow it is working perfectly fine we can add multiple tasks for example uh, do coding and click on add task now we have done the coding of the app select this click on delete task and wow we have deleted the task as well so we have made this nice to do list app in c plus plus smash the thumbs up button also subscribe to the channel so that you see such more awesome stuff on this channel thanks for watching bye bye